morning today. The time has come to say you good evening. This shows how everybody is engaged and enjoying the sessions. And everybody took his own privilege to enjoy the time. Anyway, Indo Medicon uh, is an annual festival, I would say, rather than a conference, because earlier I used to participate in this conference as a delegate, but this time it's an opportunity uh, to come as a management person of yours. And then I could realize it is uh, really a festival where all you global people come down to enjoy your youth, finding how you can remain younger for a lifetime. Remember, everybody has a desire to remain young in their life. Who doesn't want this pleasure of youth? So I think Indomedicon is distributing this gift to everyone, every year. They come here, they learn something, they practice something and they probably most of them probably time them on themselves. So I think most of them are doing on themselves. I hope. Now looking at today's topic, diabetes and stem cells. It's a very innovative subject. Everybody since morning have been talking about traditional conventional medicines which we have been taught in our during curriculum as a student. And we are practicing this science last, some of them 10 years, some of them 20 years, some of them maybe 30 years. So they have blocked their channels in a way to understand medicine. Yes, this is the only way treatment can be done. Even I was of the same philosophy when I was practicing surgery. Now last five years I have changed my dynamics to cellular medicine or cell based therapies or radiative medicine. And we make our frame of mind that these are the only modalities by which we can treat and where we cannot do anything we say, yes, nothing, there is no solution beyond this. Likewise, if we see there are many, many things where we have closed our doors, but today I will try to restrict myself to the diabetes as a global disease. Now in diabetes when we talk, Either we have a solution of going to an oral hypoglycemic agent or a shots of insulin and a, a daily lifestyle management which we keep on advising to the patient. Looking at the end of a year, two year or three year, we find these patients go in some kind of complications because whatever we do, whether we take an oral drug or we take an injectable insulin, None of them go with the biological rhythm of the body to control the sugar. This we cannot forget. They none of them go with the biological rhythm. Only the way biological rhythm can be done is by endogenous insulin, not the exogenous insulin. So this journey of mine for you will be something different than the conventional medicine. How you can get into a, that endogenous insulin and not from the exogenous insulin. We all see there are billions of dollars spent to set up an insulin factory. Maybe you are aware or not, I don't know. It's a 25 billion dollar industry. You can imagine the volume of money laundering in this. But nobody could think or try to find out, can we start many small factories of insulin in your own body. Because we have only two things, either the insulin is resistant or insulin is not being produced. Either beta cells are lost or insulin resistance. If we know we are not going with the biological rhythm of the, insul rhythm of the insulin in the body, we also know these insulins are very expensive a lifetime management and over a period of 10 years these patients will come because of digital changes gradually taking place in different organs as a lifetime patients with life threatening complications. 
So, we will see what is diabetes in brief, then we will see global trend of diabetes, how it is flowing. The most important, the stem cell or relative medicine is an innovation. Many scientists have brought this subject as a very large innovation of 20th century because this has changed the dynamics of medicine, complete change of dynamics. What you have been taught are absolutely changing now. In fact, if you see, the medicine subject itself is a dynamic. It's a very big dynamic subject. What we learn today may not be to the same thing tomorrow. It will keep on changing. There are a lot of scientific research happening in every field. Till they come to your application, we may not know even what is happening. So, stem cell, regenerative medicine, cell-based therapy, or cellular medicine, whatever you can call, is the science of future. Deepak had been in his talk referring repeatedly stem cell or peptides. Yes, I keep on talking on this peptide or regenerative medicine molecular science. It was a future. Now it is coming up in existence. It is coming up in existence. Maybe we don't have a source to reach it. We are not trying to learn it because we make our minds but we, are, we, have, we have got the degree of MDMS and we have done all in the medicine. And we don't try to open up the future of life. Then we will see making beta cells with stem cells. Then I will show you some of my case studies how stem cells can play a major role to create a biological rhythm of insulin in your body. And diabetes, not only the diabetes to control, but overall if you see the global scenario, if you go to any hospital, you will find more the number of patients with diabetic and diabetic complications than any other disease. We don't have to calculate number of people suffering with diabetes. Calculate the people who are suffering with diabetes and the leading complications of those. So let's see this journey how it is going to take for you. In brief, if you see diabetes, as I told you, or everybody is talking about is that insulin resistance or deficiency of insulin. Traditional methods, as I told you, they cannot match with the biological rhythm which is required to control the insulin uh, sugar by any means either you go for oral medication or insulin per se and ultimately while taking insulin only the patient dies off with this complication. The global scenario if you want to read about the diabetes, if you see diabetes global scenario, China is the leader. Next come India, you can imagine the population ratio is getting into this urbanization disease. Rather I put it in this way, we used to hear the epidemics of infectious disease or communicable disease, but nobody could imagine there will be a disease which be a global epidemic. And this has taken a global epidemic now and it will keep on growing. Nationwide if you see the most of the countries India remains a leader to the gold mine for diabetes. It's growing day by day, day by day. Anatomy of the pancreas is very important before we go to the cellular medicine. Reason being that it's a small organ like a banana shape, retroperitoneal, six inches long. Like a, you have a brown bread in the hand, honeycomb appearance. In the honeycomb appearance, you'll find some type of exogenous gland and endogenous gland. Uh, we are all concerned with endogenous glands like cells of Langerhans because very important reason is they are playing with the hormones and these hormones are supposed to be released direct in the circulation not anywhere. So these Langerhans cells are supposed to be very close to the vascular system. So that is why the endome is very important when we look at a cellular application of it. During development if you see germ cell differentiation, the three layers like ectoderm, endoderm and mesoderm, endoderm remains at the inner layer. And this is a very uh, early stage of embryo where you see the endoderm remains very close to the developing aorta. Still everywhere if you see it has remained very close to the vascular system of the body. During embryonic age you can see it's again Langerhans cells are very close to capillaries and blood vessels. This indicates an even in maturity size. This shows how important these cells of Langerhans are required to be very close to the vascular system so that the secretions 
directly play with the glucose level. The sensitivity is very important to keep the uh, level of glucose and the insulin levels which are playing glucagon, insulin, the four hormones which are concerned. Because that is the reason I said to you, okay, biorhythmic management of the insulin, what body can do, no other insulin in the world can do it. The reason is that they are playing naturally made in such a way anatomical arrangement. The receptor ratio between both of them is so close, a little change will take care of their balancing. These are the hormones of the pancreas, castrin, glucagon. I did not talk much about it because they are out of my preview, just to refer you. The type 1 diabetes disorders, type 2 diabetes is more too important for us to see. The type 1, we all know, is an autoimmune disease. It plays with the destruction of uh, beta cells due to antibodies and uh, type 2 is a resistance to the insulin. Uh, it just uh, to show you uh, how it works like, if you see here in normal course the insulin plays receptor activity here and the glucose gets into the cell for the breakdown. Whereas in diabetes, diabetes 2, the insulin doesn't reach to the receptor glucose doesn't break down in a simple way to understand, whereas in diabetes 2, the resistance which doesn't allow insulin to go in. Now this insulin resistance is because of the sum of the factors like you can say TNF alpha and all those will play a major role in type 2 diabetes. Now, after understanding the basic concept of why we are looking for application of stem cell in diabetes and the enzyme which makes us understand the type 1 and type 2 disease. We see what is a stem cell. It is an undifferentiated cell of a multicellular organ which is capable of giving rise to indefinite cell divisions, same type or differentiation. Same type they can divide as well as they can differentiate to any other tissue and they can maintain this status as much as time. These are the stem cells basically. Now the sources of stem cells if you see the source of the stem cells, if we divide, we can understand the embryonic source, the adult source, the basically we consider two, but there are other which we consider are fetal stem cells, but the fetal stem cells are also the part of the uh, adult stem cells. The fetal stem cells or embryonic stem cells, they remain with the toti and pluripotent characters up to the baby comes to the delivery stage, but the cord, cord tissue, bone marrow, adipose tissue and peripheral blood or tooth remain the adult stem cells which have a multi lineage potency and the earlier one is a totipotent or pluripotent potencies. The applications if you can understand how the different sources are there which can be applied to culture the cells and uh, one more source is one which is now recently 2012 we are aware the world has recognized the science in a very global way by awarding Nobel Prize to Shimeya Amanika and Dr. Gordon. He is one of his spine surgeon in Japan and second is a biologist in UK. The idea of them to get into this field was when the Dolly the Sheep was born in 1996. Then onward the science is talking about the stem cells and now after IPS cells where really the biological revolution has taken place where we can call the reversing of a human age cycle in biological where the adult somatic stem cell was converted or differentiated into an embryonic stem cell by inducing four factors, transcription factors like Nanox, SOX2, these kind of four factors were CMAC introduced in the cell and the cell was can completely reverse to the biologically embryonic character. As I told you, pot potency of the cells totipotent, pluripotent, multipotent. Now, these potencies make the effort of the cell to give the lineage of number of cells. We have 220 types of cells. Totipotency indicates you that the cell has a potency of having differentiating 220 types of cells plus extra embryonic tissue where the totipotent cells can be used here for cloning capacities, cloning capacities. Whereas pluripotent cells where CDX R2 is the surface marker first expressed, the cell loses the first potency cycle of getting into differentiated of extra embryonic tissue. The cells remains only for the pluripotent character. And then comes the multipotent. Multipotent are almost all adult stem cells are multipotent cells. 
Multipotency indicates that there were limited, limited lineage of differentiation. Limited lineage of differentiation means like if you take a hematopoietic stem cell, it has a potential of related, related to the blood components. Whereas if you take MSC, mesenchymal stem cell, it has got a basic limitation to differentiate into like muscle cell, bone cell, cartilage cell, adipose cell. And the same cell further can be de-differentiated, trans-differentiated into different lineages that is a different manipulation techniques. But the, ideally if you see, they have a potency which is limited to limited by natural way. Natural way, like MSC is remaining in the bone marrow, they have a potential to bone marrow and bone remain as in one organ if you see, it's a one organ, cannot be differentiated. Because the same mesenchymal stem cell becomes an osteocyte, chondrocyte, the one cells which are along the margins of the bone marrow, they have a potential reflection of CD166 indicating that these cells are differentiated into cartilage lineage or bone lineage. So there is, I treat it as a one organ, so this is of bone marrow and these, they are combined to other in stem cell therapy. That is the reason this I told you is that this new journey will change the dynamics of science further. Now, mesoderm denatives, if you can see skin, brain, now mesoderm will be having, as I told you, blood vessels, heart, endodermal lineages. These can be interchanged by trans differentiation and inter differentiation. This I'll talk to you in the tomorrow's lecture when I'm going to talk to you on stem cell its applications with little differentiation potential in the infertility matter. Now, this, what are the kind of cells which can be used in the application for diabetic treatment? Diabetic treatments indicate two things. One, these MSCs either has to differentiate into or a stem cell differentiate into a beta cell or they have to play a crucial role to change the behavior of the T cells that is in type 1 diabetes. How these cells play autoimmune diseases like type 1 diseases and in type 2 also how they are going to reduce the resistance of the insulin to get into a cell. Now before we go ahead, I would like to just show you some of the slides which we can understand how the progressive differentiation as I told you different types of cells like adult stem cells, embryonic stem cells as well as I told you a totipotent cell cells, the intracellular mass. Now if I show the three slides to you which will show you the lineage in which the cells have to differentiate to reach the beta cell differentiation. The ICM is the inner cell mass, it is just before the cell gets into differentiation, first before differentiation, that is a, you can call is a blastomere at this section, the pluripotent or totipotent cells. First they have to get into endodermal lineage, then pancreatic bird, and then endocrine pancreatic cell. Endocrine pancreatic cell is a, this is a islet cell langram, it is not a beta cell, it is a composition of all that. Then the last differentiation will come to a beta cell islet. Now embryonic stem cell, the one of the linear step will reduce here, directly will come to beta cells after three differentiations. Now at all the stages, in the subsequent slide I will show you, you require inducing factors, very important inducing factors, without signals, without induction. I would say rather one most important.